Hello everybody, welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be exploring modifiers. We're going to be going through the list of all of the, let me show you real quick, all of the generate modifiers. We're going to go through every single one of these and then maybe next week we might go through these ones. These ones are a little bit more tricky and I still have to research uh, some of them. Alright, so let's get started on the first one. Array is pretty easy. I think everybody knows what array is. It just um, it duplicates this in any sort of like direction you want. You can go a negative, or you can go at like an angle, you can go like that. It's very easy and you can do whatever you want with it. You can switch it around. <laughs> you can also, um, I think you can set keyframes for these. So let me just set this back to zero. Hold on. Let me set these all to zero, zero. And then let me check this one. Okay. Let's set this one to zero. Okay. And then hit I on this. Oh, well, there we go. And then we'll go to frame like 50 or something, uh, not 80. Let's go to 50. And then if we bring these out a little bit and then bring them up or something, we can hit I again. And now if we play it, dun, 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 nice. It it shoots them out just like that. And that's that's fun to do. You can play around with these. This is very handy if you want to create duplicate buildings or anything like that. Just there's a lot of uses for that. Alright, the next modifier that we're going to be doing is bevel. This one is pretty uh, self-explanatory if you know what bevel is. <laughs> it just rounds the edges. And this is how big the, the roundness of the edges are. And then this is how smooth it is, the segments. So if you turn this up, it'll make it um, smoother. It's like a subdivision. It just makes it smoother, just like that. And I'm the profile, I'm not totally sure what all these do. But you can play around with these settings. This is very handy. You should always try to bevel your your uh, edges. You don't want to ever have a straight edge. Like in Blender, um, there's it just there's straight edges all the time, and you don't want that. You don't just want a straight cutoff because that that's not realistic in the real world. So you should always try to add a bevel. Or if you don't want to use the modifier, you can pr go into edit mode and press W and click bevel right there, and then you can use the scroll wheel and do that. That's a different way of beveling. Alright, the next uh, one is Boolean. This one is pretty confusing. It took me a little bit to understand it, but we'll, I will show you. So let's just add in a uh, cylinder right here. We'll scale it down, then we'll scale it up. So you should add the Boolean modifier to whatever uh, object is going to look the most like it. So this is still going to look like a cube, so I'm going to add it to this. Alright, so let's just add it, Boolean. And there's three different options right here, and we will go through them all. The first one is intersect, and then we got to select our cylinder. This is going to be it. And intersect, um, let's just apply it real quick. Boom, and then we'll delete this. And then as you can see, it just adds it right there. Hold on, let's go back, 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 back. There we go. If we move this to the side, you can see if we go into wireframe, it, it does that. It, it just intersects it, and whatever part of the cube this cylinder is, that is the part where it's going to stay. So if we scale this up, you can see it stays in there. And this is an active one, so if you're, you can just play around with it in real time. All right, let's uh, grab this and we'll change it to difference. This one, it takes away from the cube. So if we bring this over here and we apply this, apply and delete this, you can see that it uh, takes away from the mesh and it adds in some vertices right here and the geometry is very nice just like that and you can add some loop cuts in here and uh, a couple years back the boolean would totally it was like buggy and it would triangulate the mesh and I'll show you what triangulate uh, down here in a little bit but it will it, it would totally mess it up but now it's fixed and it looks a lot better all right, the next one is called Union, and this one, it just combines both of the meshes. So let's just place it right here, and then we'll click Apply, and delete the cylinder. And then, as you can see right now, it combined them both, so this is one mesh. And the vertices look very nice, there's no weird doubling or anything like that. The boolean just makes it so that it looks really nice, and you can add in uh, loop cuts, Oh, I guess you can't really add a loop cut right there, but you, it, it's very handy if you want to combine object. This is like pretty simple, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do with a boolean modifier. All right, 
Um, let's let's go back and add in another cube, and then we'll go into the next one. The next one is build. This one is pretty fun. Let's actually we need to add some vertices to this, so I'm just going to subdivide this cube. This is pretty cool. If we hit play right here, play, it'll build the cube, just like that. That's pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> so if we click randomize, it will totally randomize how it builds it. And as you can see, it's really like crazy. Let me just there, zoom in a little. And then you can also reverse it. So let's go back and it will start disintegrating the cube. This is a lot of fun. You can also change the, the start time and the length of how long it takes to build it. You can do some really cool animations with that. And yeah. All right, the next one is called Decimate. Decimate, whatever, how, however you say that. This one, um, it kind of, it's the opposite of the subdivision surface. I think it just, like, here, hold on, we have to, uh, wait a second. Actually, this is not a very good one to use. Let's add in a uh, UV sphere and then do it. So the decimate, uh, if we change this ratio, it will kind of make it so that it's less vertices, as you can see right there. And then the unsubdivide, It'll do the same thing if we bring the iterations up. It'll just make it so there's less vertices. If you look up here, 66 vertices. But if we bring this down, it's 130, uh, 242. That's it's just kind of the opposite. And if we go, it'll just go all the way to like one vertice. All right, it'll go to three vertices. Okay, there you go. And the same thing for the plano. This one's a little weird. If we change up the angle limit, it kind of like messes with the the faces. I'm not totally sure what this one does. It you can change all boundaries and it fixes it sort of. But there, it's just different ways of unsubdividing, um, um, unsubdividing meshes. All right, the next one is edge split. Here, let me fix this real quick. Let me just add in a cube real quick. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you real quick. Let's scale that up. Bring it out. Scale it. Boom. Scale. Bring it out a little bit. As you can see, there's a, there's a line right there, so if we hit smooth, it'll kind of fix it. But as you can see, the shading is really weird, and there's some like weird stuff with the edges. So all we have to do to fix this is add the edge split, and then it smooths it out. And also, you, you can see that the top is still smooth, there's no, there's no line, and then uh, the edges are crisp and look very nice. All right, the next one is called a mask. I'm gonna add in a UV sphere. This one is just like it sounds. If you've ever done Photoshop, you know exactly what this is. <laughs> so let me um, let me add in a new vertex group right here, vertex group, just add a plus. And then we'll go into edit mode and go to weight paint. And so this, hold on a second. If we just paint, you can see that it adds some red. And now if we apply this, and go back to object mode, it will just show up right where I painted the red. And then you can also, let me go back into um, uh, da, 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 right here, invert, it'll invert it, and then where I painted uh, blue, where it's blue, if I paint blue right here, and go back into object mode, hold on a second, I think I need to update this. Yeah, that's what it is, it has to be completely blue for, the, for it to disappear. All right, so that's what that is. Let's just go back. Um, next one is a mirror. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I think I used it a couple of times in my tutorials. All we have to do is just go into edit mode and move it. And then as you can see, it just mirrors it onto the side. And then if we can go like that, it just mirrors it. <laughs> All right, let's delete that. That's what it does. Um, I think that one's pretty easy to understand. The multi-resolution, this one is for sculpting. So let's go into sculpt mode real quick. And these are the levels of sculpting that you are going to do. So let's just go like that. As you can see, there's not a lot of vertices here, so it's kind of hard to sculpt. But all we have to do is bring up, um, oh, we have to click subdivide right here, and that will make it so it's subdivided. And then we can keep going just like that and do some more stuff. We can sculpt. Uh, subdivide it again, and then we can go in and do some detailed sculpting. And go one more time, and then uh, bring that down, and then sculpt just like that. There we go. That's what it does. It just, uh, and if we hide this, it'll get rid of all the subdivisions. That's a, you should always do this if you're using sculpting because it's really handy to go back and forth between the levels. And yeah. All right. Let's delete that. 
Let's go into the next one. It's called Remesh. This one is good for, let me go into edit object mode. Uh, this one is good for text. Let's rotate it onto its side. And then I'm just gonna type Blender or something. Um, da -da 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 -da. This one is good for text. So if I convert this to a mesh by hitting Alt-C, Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text, it'll become a mesh. But as you can see, the vertices, they're crazy. They're triangulated and it looks really weird. And so how we fix this is by using the Remesh modifier. So if we hit Remesh, and then it's auto-selected to remove disconnected pieces, we don't want that. We want it to... Wait a second, I think we have to extrude it back. There we go. Once we extruded it back, it will fix it, and it, you'll be able to see it. But as you can see right now, it's really weird looking, so all we have to do is turn up the octa depth a little bit, and it will finally fix it. And then if we hit Z, the mesh is very clean, and it squares instead of these weird triangle thingies. So that's fun to do. You can also change it to blocks, which I didn't know about this, and then it looks, it's like blocking. I think that looks really cool. And you can change this down to make it more blocky. It's kind of like a Minecraft looking text. <laughs> so that's really fun to do. You can do um, different things. Let me show you what it looks like with a um, with a UV sphere real quick. This looks really cool. So let me just do that. Remesh uh, blocks. And then as you can see, it looks like that. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. There we go. All right, now let's move on to the next one. So just right now I made a plane and I deleted the vertices up here and extruded this one up. And the next modifier that we're going to be looking at is called the screw modifier. And this one is pretty cool. Um, you can do a lot of things with it and I will show you what it is. So the screw, this, um, it just, it's a screw. <laughs> it goes in a circle and goes up and you can change the, how far it goes up and the angle. So let's bring it down. And then we'll like go like this. You can play around with that. You can set the iterations up, and it will just keep going up like that. And it's kind of like a staircase going up. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this one. Just play around with it, and uh, the screw going up like that. And th there's just a lot of fun things that you can do. The next one that we're going to be looking at is called the solidify modifier. All right. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And as you can see, the solidify it just solidifies it. It's pretty self-explanatory. It thickens whatever uh, mesh you applied it to. So if you turn this off, you can see that it's completely flat. You turn it back on and it's got some thickness. You can change the thickness right here. Just bring it down. You can also change the offset. So I think it goes in the way that the normals are going. And so if you flip this, it'll be going up instead of down. All right. Um, I'm not sure what these do right here. It just there's There's a couple things I don't know about. Uh, the clamp, I don't know either, but the only thing that I ever really use is the thickness and then the offset. If you want it right in the middle, just set this offset to zero and it will be right in the middle, just like that, because usually it's just set to one or uh, positive one, so just set it to zero and it will be right in the middle. All right, on to the next one. It is called the subdivision surface. Let's actually use a better uh, one. Let's use a cube, actually. So this one I use all the time, and it is it just subsurfs the, it subdivides it and makes the mesh a lot smoother. So once we added it to the cube, as you can see from a cube, it just made it smoother, and it added some more vertices. To see a more high resolution version of this, all we have to do is turn the view up, and then boom, there you go. It went from a cube right here to a circle, a very smooth circle, just like that. All right, the next one is the triangulate. Let's subdivide this. Actually, hold on, let's make it smooth, or uh, flat, I mean. And then we'll subdivide this cube a little bit, just like that, and then we'll hit triangulate. This one just triangulates the mesh. As you can see, if I press Z, it triangulated all the faces. So if we apply it and go into edit mode, uh, you can see all the faces are triangles, just like that. All right, the last one, let me add this, is the wireframe. Let me add some more um, subdivisions. The wireframe is very useful as well, and it's very cool. All it does is it takes the mesh away and leaves the wireframe. So if we go into edit mode, all these faces are going to be gone, but these edges are going to stay here. 
Okay, so let's go back into object mode, and as you can see, it does that, and you can use this for cages, it kind of looks like a cage already, or whatever, I use it all the time though. You can turn up the thickness by changing this, the crease weight, I don't know what this does, the offset does exactly what uh, it did for the so solidify, it just switches where it, the direction of it goes. So if you want it in the middle, just change it to zero, and it will be in the middle. And also you can change uh, the material. Uh, if the, you have two materials and you want the wireframe to be a different, just change it to one or whatever. You can also uncheck replace original and it will keep your original box but then add the wireframe over top. Just like that. And then you can choose even thickness. It just evens everything out. Boundary, I'm not sure what that does. But yeah, that was all the generate uh, modifiers. I went through them pretty fast. There's a lot of more options that you can do. I just gave a brief overview. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you learned something new, tell me in the comments down below and subscribe for more tutorials. I'm going to be trying to upload more often and so you guys can get a lot of stuff out of it. And also I'm updating the website right now, I'm trying to get that up and running. And so go, you can go check that out, the link is in the description. It's not very good right now because I'm still working on it. But that is going to be it, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Goodbye.